Top experts have said that with the test of the 5,500 km range Agni 5 missile in full operational configuration from a canisterized road mobile launcher, India now has the ability to strike China's eastern seaboard cities from southern part of India. The Agni 5 features a new system on chip based on board computer with seven times greater processing capability, while the use of carbon fiber reinforced polymer casings provides greater fuel fraction and enhances range capability and overall structural integrity. The Agni 5 also features digitally connected multi channel communications, which reduces a lot of the cabling that reduces the risk of failure. The missile canister sits on the transport come tilting vehicle, and it consists of a mission-ready Agni-5 missile, and a gas generator for ejecting the missile out of the canister, and this cold launch scheme allows the missile to be launched from relatively unprepared strips. All three stages of the Agni-5 has flex nozzle control systems to enhance maneuverability during flight, and the re-entry vehicle is also highly maneuverable, that will make it very difficult to intercept even by the upcoming Chinese terminal anti-ballistic missile defenses. The Agni-5 will serve as a strong baseline for the 12,000 km range Agni-6 missile with 10 MERF warheads, but it will be much sleeker than the Agni-5 and will have the capability to be launched from both submarines and land-based launchers. India will sign the $3 billion contract with the US for 30 MQ-9B armed drones during the India-US 2 plus 2 dialogue in December. It's important for India to acquire these armed drones as its own indigenous capability in this sector is limited, while both China and Pakistan operate Chinese-made armed drones, and Pakistan has recently signed an agreement with Turkey to produce components for the Anka S Long Endurance drone, and is also eyeing the Bayraktar TB2 armed drones from Turkey. The news of the acquisition comes after the recent meeting between Prime Minister Modi and the Chief Executive Officer of General Atomics Global Corporation in Washington. The two private sector firms Kaya Virtualization Tech Private Limited and Robot Guru Education Technologies Private Limited have passed the technical evaluation for Exoskeleton Project under the request for proposal issued by Simulator Development Division of the Indian Army. The exoskeleton will weigh less than 25 kilograms, and must have at least one hour of endurance, and can be charged via a docking station. The system will be enclosed in an all-weather rugged case for the ease of transportation and life cycle enhancement. Various sensors such as position sensor joint angle sensor and gravity sensor will be used, that will provide real-time actuations with no lag. The final user trials will be conducted after eight months once the design process has started, and the exoskeleton will see its operation in the Indian Army within the next two years. Two U.S. Senators Mark Warner and John Cornyn have urged the U.S. President Joe Biden to grant a CATSA waiver to India for buying the S-400 system from Russia. The senators also said that India has taken significant steps to reduce its purchases of Russian military equipment, and the transactions between India and Russia is declining. They also encouraged the Biden administration to engage with India constructively, and continue supporting India with alternatives to Russian equipment. Meanwhile, Republican Congressman Mike Waltz has argued the case of a U.S.-India alliance, as this is the most important relationship of the 21st century. The chairperson of UAE Space Agency has said that India and UAE are looking at a wide variety of scientific cooperation in the space sector, and the United Arab Emirates could use low-cost launch vehicles developed by the ISRO for lifting off small satellites from within the country. The first developmental flight of ISRO's small satellite launch vehicle is scheduled by the end of 2021.